Anna joins me as we take a look at some of the things you've been talking about on X. And what have they been saying? Thanks, oh, as always. The first, of course, yeah. that's topping headlines now and trending is that the federal government is set to launch the new national ID with payment capabilities. And this first one is coming from People's Choice saying that why a new one? I mean, why when they have not even done registering or giving people the old card? Uh, yes, that is it. From People's Choice, federal government is set to launch this new national ID. Why new one when they are not even done with the old one? They want to put us into another stress like name and voters card. Now, if you recall the stress we had to pass through <laughs> through that period, I, I don't know if anyone wants to go through that I again, remember. except they make it different this time and make it seamless. People are just tired of this repeat and rinse process when it sure. comes to capturing our data as a population. So you can't blame them for getting worried. Mayowa David says, I see a lot of people criticizing this ID card. Before you criticize, try and understand, or else you will look like, I don't know what he's trying to say, person. If you don't ask, if you don't know, ask. It's not a new enrollment for ID that is named, it's a new card that you can use to do transactions, withdraw money after linking with your bank account. It carries your name numbers and no enrollment, just a request for the card. And that was all, instead of the slip, we're using uh, now till it will be card. All right. I never got my card, by the way. You never I got? never got my card. Wow. And I'm sure you're not the only one. A lot of people are in this shoot. Maybe I didn't follow up. I don't know. But I got tired at some point. It, it's tiring. Mm -hmm. Pentacle says that the NIN thing has not been successfully implemented. And now this. Am I the only one who thinks we aren't there yet? This development is rushed and has to be streamlined across the board. Mm. The Emperor says this, is, this really will be nice. I think... It's long overdue. Other countries are doing it already. So for those who have exposure outside the country, I'm sure they I think understand. they want to make it look like the social security number, something like that. Just integrate all of this so yes. that we don't have to. I hope that when this is done, we're not going to look for another card because uh, it looks like, anyway. And what's the next Maybe the one? other card would be for something else. But Kate Jude says, it's a welcome development, but I hope we're copying other countries like the United States to implement their social security number and national identity system will also copy and implement their minimum wage which ours is the lowest in the world when you compare to other oil producing countries so I think Katie Jude is trying to say if we're copying then copy everything mm -hmm. that is good from these countries that you're trying to copy from yes I, I can't I can't forget I've forgotten what it, what his name but I remember saying a snippet online where he said, we like to copy and paste. <laughs> Please, if you can't paste properly, stop copying. Okay. Uh, so when people say Nigeria has the cheapest that cheapest that, we also have one of the lowest minimum wage. So when you want to copy, copy, copy everything. everything. And if so you that, can't... Uh, in this country, no grief for anybody. That is a slogan for young people. <laughs> Let's go to Lagos State to demolish popular landmark market, a landmark beach. Because it's been a big issue. Yes. Uh, the Lagos... Calabar uh, road, that road that's going to crisscross about nine states or so, mm. and it's going to cost billions of naira, or maybe billions of dollars, I don't know. Uh, it's causing a bit of an issue. It's, a, it's called the coastal road. So it's about 700 kilometers. I think it's going to be one of the biggest infrastructure project ever, I have heard. I don't know, I stand to be corrected. The Lagos, um, no, the third mainland bridge is barely 11 kilometers. Yes. It was built around 10 years or so. This is Dual carriage, five lanes to your left, five lanes to your right, and then the center, the median, is going to have a rail line from Lagos all the way down to Calabar, and is intense. So that's going to affect some property, Many some properties. investments, and all of that. So landmark beach property or the landmark park is one of those places that will be affected. And I understand the gentleman had invested about 200 or a so, lot of 100 money. million dollars. 100 million. And there are also investors also so, who will be affected with this. So uh, people, people are, have been reacting. Yeah, people are talking about it already. Imar Rock yep. says that it is highly unethical to cripple businesses along this route because today, Landmark directly employs 4,000 Nigerians and 12,000 indirectly. The Minister of Works and the government should facilitate this rerouting process, I beg. That also tells you that when you cut businesses, a lot of people are also affected yeah. so you weigh the options you weigh whatever <clears throat> advantages and disadvantages this will cause 
at, at the end of the day too, when you're making investment, the, this is especially to Lagos, uh, because when we had a conversation with the Lagos State Governor, these are some of the issues I raised that uh, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but in relation that people need to know where they can do what, so that when the government comes, uh, they don't take it down at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, so, so that's the whole area. So it's that's going the to, area wow. on your screen. So that's the beach area. It has other investments. So this, this is the um, swimming pool area. So it's, it's, it's a fantastic facility, but all of this may go down because of that road. So. Mm. Hey. Jeffrey, I'm also asking, I mean, you said oh, that people should know where to do business and investments. They should ask questions. What if they ask questions? What if and these plans misguided. were not in, yes. uh, in the beginning, at the beginning? I mean, exactly. you, you can't tell me this place is for building something and then I'll go and invest there. Yes, if that, I know what, what I mean by that there. is that we've seen buildings or infrastructure go up and then the government brings it down. Yes. And sometimes is the failure to find out what sometimes is the complicity of, of the officials out. of government. Yes. Uh, so let's go. Uh, All right. This person says, Adigon Olua Tobi says, Jesus, we are now driving out local investors. I think the government officials of the resort and the contractor can reach out uh, and reach an understanding and come up with a construction masterpiece which will boost tourism. Mm. That's his option, opinion rather. All right, and the next person also talks about, uh, but everyone knows there is pain for coastal or plan for a coastal road. I don't support any demolition, but people should know to avoid that road route as it could be built at some point, even uh, when they when they have been planning or they had been planning this since 2007. Absolutely. About. Well, that's what Felix is saying. Okay, let's race through this now. Odufuwa says not in support of anything wrong did somebody or some agency give the go ahead to build this same uh, beach resort yes that's a big question or did the man just decide to build without due permission this calls for a lot of questions Inyang, those are the balance yeah. we're looking for yes Inyang Inyang says that if nigeria has to be good for foreign investors to come in a lot of sacrifices must be made some will cry some will be happy but in the long run everything and everybody will go happy it's going to be a tough one only if the government really means business and are transparent ironia says with the way our government move how do they plan to attract investors? Nobody wants to invest in Nigeria with news going around like this. Uh, yes, I, I understand where they're coming from. Yes. It's a lot of work. But let's see. Uh, I don't know whether we have any more time. Yeah, we have more time. Let's yeah. show Pelumi a little. Uh, let's okay. rush through that. Original Joss says that um, people who embark on such trips... Okay, hold on, strong. hold on. I think ah. Pelumi is on the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so that's Gwelumi on your screen, yeah. and she was so happy coming in. This is from Original Joss Girl. It says that people who embark on such trips are very strong. I really admire them. Congratulations to her. She is obviously a strong woman. Uh, she is a daring, strong woman. Elvis Rankin says traveling is part of education. She's an adventurous human being. Mm. I can imagine what she told her father to say, I want to travel. <laughs> the father is... Anyway. <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> no, when she comes the questions. The we'll find out today because I can imagine my daughter comes and I want to drive from Lagos to Lagos. I say, you where do you want nowhere. to... Where, 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 <laughs> eh? where, where are you go? Oh, okay. Anyway. I guess. But we'll be talking to Pelumi. She will answer all of that question today on sure. the show. But there's a lot more to talk about mm. besides all of that. One of which is what constitutes cyber defamation. And we've advised, before you t tweet... Mm. or post Think. anything on X or on Instagram or on Facebook, please listen to the show today, this first segment. The lawyers will be here to explain exactly what constitutes all of that. We'll be right back after this break. Join us again.